Hi, welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting and weathering the Lorraine Ambulance, which I built in a previous video. Turn it from this into this. Okay, time to get started. I gave the whole model a primer coat first of all, and then a coat of XF69 NATO Black, and then a few patches of white to represent highlights later. I painted the whole model in Tamiya's XF63 German Grey, trying to keep it a little bit thin so that some of the, the shadow from below will still show through. Then I gave it a gloss coat of TS13 before using the decals. So the kit only includes the three Red Cross decals. So I took a license plate decal from an older kit. The decals in the kit were actually quite thick and I think with hindsight maybe it would have been better to mask them. Certainly on the rear door I had to cut that rather than trying to get it to form, conform to the shape because they're just, they're just too thick really. From the source images I looked at, German ambulances didn't seem to carry any uh, national insignia so I left those off. And then before weathering I made sure the details like the rubber tyres were painted in XF85, rubber black. I painted the wooden parts of the tools in XF60, dark yellow, and then the metal parts of the tools in XF69 NATO black. And then I went for what turned out to be quite a thick oil wash. This was some artist oil paints uh, thinned down with uh, enamel thinner. This particular colour is burnt umber. And the wash just makes sure that the detail stands out. There's a lot of rivet detail in this. And then after letting the wash dry for a short while, I just used some tissue paper and some cotton buds just to wipe the excess off, basically from the centres of, of the large flat surfaces. So at this stage the wash made things look a little bit dark, so I mixed up some more XF63 German Grey with a little bit of white and I just highlighted some of the edges, almost dry brushing the edges, some of the tops of the rivets and so on, just to give a bit more definition to those parts. So for the weathering stage I'm going to be using Summer Cursed Earth and I'm going to be mixing that with Dark Earth pigments. And I'll be mixing those two in different ratios to create different textures and different tones. I've shown the damp earth here, but actually in the end I didn't use it because it was the colour wasn't quite right, it was a bit too red. And then I'll also be using the wet FX fluid. All of these products are from AK's Heavy Muddy Weathering Set. So the way I decided to weather this was to have essentially two layers a background layer which is a bit lighter and had a bit more bulk to it which represented dry mud and then a layer on top which was a little bit thinner, a little bit darker representing fresh mud that's recently been thrown over there. The first layer was painted in two stages so initially I just used a Kursk earth quite thin just as kind of a background layer getting in most of the place I wanted mud to be most of this will be covered up later on anyway. And then I used a brush with a small amount of enamel thinner just to blend the edges of that mud into the paintwork.
You can also go down with the thin brush to represent rain running through the dust and the mud and removing parts of it. And after letting the cursed girth dry for 24 hours, I mixed a bit more of it with a little bit of plaster just to create a bit more volume and a bit more texture. Then I used some thinned cursed earth on a paintbrush and flicked it across to represent mud splashes. You can also do this using an airbrush by blowing air across the paintbrush. At this point I added another layer, mixing a little bit of the dark earth pigment with the Kursk earth and just applying it in patches on top of the previous mud. I also took this opportunity to paint the tracks NATO black and then add a little bit of the Kursk earth and pigment to them. So the key to any weathering is layering, so I added another layer of Kursk Earth, this time with more of the Dark Earth pigment, and applied it more sparingly than the previous layers. Then I repeated the mud splashing, flicking routine with this darker pigment. I added another layer of cursed earth pigment and plaster, just to bulk things up some more. I still wasn't really happy with the look, so I added another layer of cursed earth, plaster and dark earth. Once that had dried I used the wet effects just to represent wet mud, maybe oil, grease, rain, water, etc. just dripping down from the suspension, the wheels and so on. I did this with a thin brush just representing streaks. Then I started to add the tracks, which are really low quality in this kit, they're very nasty rubber um, and in fact they actually snapped as I tried to put them on. I arranged them so that this gap will be at the bottom, so hopefully that will be hidden by the mud once I add the vehicle to the diorama. I used super glue to keep the tracks in place. And then finally I used some more of the dark earth pigment this time on its own and just applied it dry over the mud texture.
The final thing to do was add a tarp over the back of the vehicle. So I protected the vehicle in cling film, or food wrap. Then I took a tissue, cut it to size, laid it over the top of the vehicle, and just brushed onto it a mixture of PVA and water. Once the first tissue was covered, I added a second layer and did the same thing. The tissue was left to dry for 24 hours and then I gave it a coat of Tamiya's white primer. The tissue was oversized so I gave it a little bit of a trim. Then I painted it in Vallejo's German Field Grey. And then highlighted it with a lighter version of that. And here is the final result. I'm quite pleased with this, it was quite a basic kit with some fit issues and quite unclear instructions, but I think it's turned out alright. In a future video I'll be adding this vehicle to a diorama, either with mini arts, wounded soldiers, or maybe with this set of soldiers carrying a stretcher from Masterbox. So thank you for watching, if you want to see how this vehicle turns out in the diorama, please hit subscribe.